Welcome to this Storm FX video about iSCSI. In the next minutes, I will explain and show how you can use iSCSI to connect virtually any computer on the network to a high performance storage. This can be a Thunderbolt disk or an Infotrend fiber channel storage, for example. This diagram here shows a common setup in which fast fiber channel storage is directly connected to a finishing workstation. If other workstations on the network want to connect to the same storage, they usually connect through network shares. This means that this workstation here will act as a server, it will share the files and manage the read-write access to the storage. Unfortunately, commonly used protocols such as NFS, SMB or AFP can be very unreliable when it comes to streaming video data. The most common problem is drop-free playback. And this is where iSCSI becomes really interesting. iSCSI is very similar to fiber channel. This means a computer will see the storage not as a network share, but as a local disk. Applications like Smoke love this. And depending on the codec used, you can work with high quality data over 1 gig E and certainly over 10 gig E. To enable iSCSI, you can use an application that is provided by Studio Network Solutions. It's called Global SAN. And I'm going to um, enable iSCSI to a storage device um, that I have connected to my MacBook Pro here. It's uh, a Thunderbolt device, let's see, little big disk. And in the iSCSI and fiber channel world, um, there are two terms, initiator and target. The target is generally the storage device, and the initiator is the workstation that um, initiates read and write requests. So the initiator in my case could be um, a MacBook Pro, and the target is going to be a little big disk. Um, so the first thing that I need to do is to add it to my to my list here. So let's do that. My little big disk has two partitions, um, data one and data two. So let's add both of them. I get a warning. Um, I will explain later what this means because it is essential to understand how iSCSI works. Here they are. After a while they will turn into a green status, which means they are online. Um, and that's pretty much almost everything I need to do. The only thing that I need to do now is I need to enable my MacBook Pro to act as a iSCSI server. Once I have the server up and running, I can see the um, two Thunderbolt volumes here, data one and data two. They have a different icon because they are iSCSI enabled. Um, and um, can be um, reached from any machine on the network with a running iSCSI initiator. I simply open GlobalSAN on that machine as well. I connect to the MacBook Pro. It will appear in this list and I can simply say please connect. And magically the very same volumes will appear here as well. Now I have to be very careful here because both computers think that um, data 1 and data 2 um, are local disks. So if both users um, in the background the MacBook user and in the foreground over VNC the Mac Pro user, if both users are using um, the volume data 1 I, this will lead to data corruption. For applications like Smoke or Mac or other finishing applications, um, um, see having these disks over the network as local disks um, um, dramatically can increase um, the reliability. Um, it is um, the overall performance will increase, um, and <clears throat> the only thing that, as already said, needs to be addressed is um, volume sharing. And um, Studio Network Solutions, the company that provides Global SAN, um, can address this as well using SANMP. And the next video is going to explain how SANMP works.